What's up guys, welcome back to another video, and today I will be showing off my fully automatic minecart system in Minecraft 1.11. So if you're wondering why does this look kind of ugly and like it was built in an old version of Minecraft, that's because that's what I was going for. There was a video posted by someone named Buckslice, which there will be a link to that video in the description below and probably up on the screen right now. I mean, basically what happened in that video is he showed off a minecart uh, system he made for his server and I absolutely fell in love with the design but there was one problem I had no clue how to build it at the time I was a really novice at redstone and until command blocks came around and I got you know kind of knowing how they worked I couldn't really replicate what he did but until now I finally finally have figured out the secret kind of to uh, his redstone and that's what I've recreated here so when you walk in, you're greeted with this. So the first thing you would uh, do is pick your location. So some of these, uh, these don't actually go anywhere. And the signs look weird because I did actually uh, use most of the exact sign text that he had on his um, minecart station. So basically what you do, I mean, it's pretty idiot proof right here. All you do, you walk up to the pressure plate, hit it, and the redstone torch turns on. And you can do it as fast as you want all the way down the line. Uh, so, for our example, we're going to be going to Lemonberry's Castle. Then, you turn over to here. So, this is Departures. And you can see there's... You can't get in here or anything. And there's this little... Uh, oop, I just broke it. <laughs> this little torch here. Cart available if light is off. Um, if the light is on, add your own cart over here. You can see the light is on, meaning we do need to add a cart. If you go to the minecart loader, so all you have to do is place a minecart here and push in. You will notice this will go down. That is pretty much how it works. Now this does have a max capacity storage of about 15 minecarts and you can load it as fast as you want but when it does reach 15 minecarts it will reject it and push it back and you actually at 15 minecarts this is a new feature I completely forgot I added at 15 minecarts this will close right here so you can't even put anything there and once you use a minecart this will come down and you can put more in. So now we have our uh, destination selected we go ahead step on this this closes, you can see the pressure plates disappear, uh, so no one can change our location. We get in here after seven uh, note block ticks. We go, remember we should end at Lemonberry's Castle. And there we are. So then, I do also have an entrance system, um, so let me go ahead and uh, spawn in a minecart quickly. Okay, so you would come in right here on these same tracks you came uh, out on. You would go over that little pressure plate there. And you would land here in the arrivals. So then, uh, you there's a little exit sign. You would shift click to get out and there's only one spot you can land, which is that, which then recycles the cart you just used back up into the storage system. And you can see the pressure plates are back. So now it's time to kind of go over some of the safety features and just other cool features, I guess, of this minecart system that weren't original that I kind of added. First one is going to be this one. So I came up with the idea that, you know, what if you're standing on here? Because obviously when you're standing in there, um, you can't get out. Meaning that if someone else were here, this is designed obviously for a multiplayer server, but if you were in there and someone just decided oh I'm gonna come change their location to that I thought that would not be a good thing so basically what I've done is when you step on this pressure plate and I'll be careful not to break any redstone through here but I've decided uh, when you step on this pressure plate you can see this giant chain of command blocks here basically it just sets all of these pressure plates here to air then we go into here um, and I'll explain all how this works uh, later but basically, when you come down here, this is how it selects the track. This pressure plate right here, if we dig under, you can see there's a huge row of command blocks. And basically what it does is when you go over this pressure plate, um, I keep saying pressure plate, it's detector rail. But when you go over that detector rail, basically what will happen is it will put these back onto normal pressure plates. Because at that point, you're already into the location you need, therefore people can change the location. Also another feature that I recently added, I will show off quickly here, is that people used to be able to spam the minecarts by just, because this, once you would get off of it, it would close. But now I have made it, oh boy, minecart, oh gosh, there is so much going wrong. <laughs> and yes, I will explain why this track just opened up here in a second. But basically, um, these pressure plates here, what they do, 
Um, one of them, I forget it, I think it's this one actually. Uh, basically what that will do is that will retract this right here. Uh, just to make it so that, you know, you're, you basically can't spam minecarts. And it waits just a certain amount of time before someone can actually summon another minecart, which is way down there. Uh, and, oh, yes, here's another uh, example. As you can see right now, this torch has turned to locked. Um, because right now we didn't we didn't go over the bottom uh, so it didn't actually replace the pressure plates so you can see there were no pressure plates there and I am finally saying the correct term and then if we go down here place that on there and make our way back up you will see that the are uh, the uh, I was gonna say detector rails but I keep getting confused the pressure plates are back and it is back to unlocked Next feature I um, I made because obviously when the guy made this it was in like beta or something there is no such thing as command blocks um, and I will show you the kind of command block system I have running back here uh, so this is it basically what happens is when someone steps on a pressure plate it will um, uh, remove a redstone block which uh, I think uh, these first ones set the uh, red or remove the redstone block here and you can see um, one repeater goes inside which will turn off the or on the torch I'm sorry it will turn on the torch um, showing that you selected the location then it will um, because these are all inverted when it disappears it will activate all these command blocks and basically what this runs is it selects this track thing back here and I, I'll uh, explain how that works um, in a minute, but basically then what happens is it will set everything else except this to um, redstone blocks just um, so that, you know, multiple torches aren't uh, lit up at the same time. So now on to, I, I, I know this is probably kind of confusing for you. I'm trying to explain it the best I can, but now on to how this here works. You can see the, the kind of gist of how this works, and basically um, most of these uh, command blocks right here, what they are for is actually going ahead and setting these to certain things. So let's, for example, go to location 1, and I will have to go back in around here. Um, so location 1, we will hit that, and you will see when we go back out here that this is... Um, this is removed, just like I talked about earlier, and then it set everything else to redstone blocks. And when we go in here, you can see it it made everything before number one. It made that iron below it and rails, and then everything past it, except in this case there's nothing past it, will be solid two iron blocks so that when the minecart is coming through, it will hit those, fall onto the number one... Um, uh, track basically so I'll do another demonstration right here with number what is this number seven yeah number seven so we go back here and yes there's a bunch of crap out here I don't I don't even know what some of this is but if we go back here to number seven I think which is that one go ahead go back here and you will see that everything not everything but the thing behind directly behind it is made into solid iron blocks so meaning if a minecart were to hit it it would fall down onto the selected track that's basically how that works onto the cart loading system so this is a heaping massive pile of crap uh, that's how i like to explain this kind of redstone and this is actually called a pez dispenser on the redstone circuit here so basically uh, i will try not to break anything by doing this but here's what happens so you can see the minecart stack on top of the trap door that is here and so what happens is when someone hits the um the pressure plate down here it will make this redstone block here disappear reappear uh, actually no i don't think it's there yeah it's right here so redstone block will disappear and reappear right here and when i do that you will see that this trap door yeah, actually just listen for it because i don't you can't hear it right now but just just listen you hear that that trap door goes extremely quickly, and yes, this did land right here because there's no block. But it basically just opens and closes. What just happened? It opens and closes really quickly, um, so that you know, um, it it basically just deposits one minecart down, uh, and that's kind of how that works. And then we will go back in here and kind of watch. So, and yes, this did pop up because we just got rid of all the minecarts. So if we push this. We will come up here, hopefully quickly here, and see the minecart traveling up. It will throw it down, and the way that I have kind of developed the um, it detecting they're not a minecart in the system is this repeating command block here. 
basically what it's doing is it's testing for a minecart with the radius of 3, which I made sure that a minecart down there or anywhere else would not interfere. It had to be right here. So, when it did detect a minecart, it would send a redstone signal to this, which would then put a redstone block somewhere down here, which would then in turn do some more redstone, uh, making that piston go up and down, and the light turn on and off. And then you will see here, when we do, uh, delete this minecart, you can see you just heard that piston down there. None of this is powered anymore, and now it is not detecting a minecart. So uh, that's how that works. And then as far as the system detecting how... Um, if like the the thing here is full this is another repeating command block testing for a minecart so that when it gets up to about here it will trigger this and what this will do is actually um, summon I can't do it because it would take too long to fill um, but basically what it does um, and you don't have to worry about um, it like because there is a short brief moment here you can see where a minecart would come through and activate this but it only gives a one pulse signal so you have to wait till they build up and once it builds up high enough it will fill up this entire redstone line and then in turn activate this but basically when it's full what will happen down here is this uh i don't think it's uh, glowstone but basically that will just be covered up um so you can't put any more carts through so <laughs> Hopefully I'm explaining, again, everything clear enough here, but that's pretty much how that works. Finally, one of my last kind of new features I kind of added on to his video. By the way, again, if you do want to watch the video, it is in the link, um, and I, I think I uh, should have, at least when I edited, um, put a little clip of it in the beginning. So, here's my next dilemma. I, I uh, have seven ticks here, but I thought, well, what if someone misses their minecart, and then there's a minecart stuck on the tracks down here? So what I did is I put a minecart there, went ahead and did this, and then tested. I tested how long it took for this empty minecart to go and where it went on the track. I found it took just a little time to go... I just... Okay, well... <laughs> There's two minecarts in there for some reason, because I forgot I had loaded one into the system before, so that's why that went past. Um, and so this, right here, this is the system I have created to basically try and combat this um, empty minecart problem I was going to have. Let me make sure there's, yeah, I need to get rid of the minecarts up there so that it doesn't go double up on me. If we press this, then hopefully now you will watch. So... Um, one other, the, basically the thing this relies on is that a player in a minecart travels number one farther, number two faster than an empty minecart. So you can see the minecart here stopped right here um, because there was no player in it, and I have it timed just enough so that if, an em uh, if a minecart's empty, no matter what, it will in fact land here. But normally, you would say, well, wouldn't that interfere, though, if a player's on it? Wouldn't it open up all the players? Well, no, because I timed it out so that if a player is in a minecart, they are already past this when it opens. And that is what this pressure plate here is for. What this does, it has a slight delay uh, just for safety. And then you can see these command blocks down here. What they will do, because I, I originally didn't think of this, is when this opened... I never had anything down here to close it again, therefore the next player to come through would fall right down this hole. So I did introduce this feature that basically closes this hole up, um, and obviously if a player is riding it, this will open and they will be able to close it, but if it's a minecart that's empty, this will be open and you're thinking, okay, well if they fall down here, how the heck are they going to close it by reaching that? That's why down here I have gone ahead and replicated the exact thing. So you can see when we place a minecart, nope, right here, it will close it up. Um, and then the other feature I realized I had forgotten is that you uh, in the earlier video, I guess, I talked about how it would make the pressure plates turn into air. And you wouldn't be able to do that. And you're thinking, okay, well, the detector rail is down there, meaning the only way to do that is if a player went through, meaning no one could change the location until a player went through. And if it's an empty minecart, then you would kind of be stuck, if you get what I'm saying. So this line here basically will set the pressure plates and everything back to normal. Then the minecart that is empty will travel all the way up here and back into the collection system so that it can be reused and not wasted and go somewhere else.
I guess something else I will mention is this. This is just the note block timing system and stuff for the actual launch of the minecart. Um, and this right here, this long repeater you see, this is actually the thing that opens up that thing to detect whether or not a minecart is in fact empty, because I couldn't really find another practical way to do that. So, uh, I guess I will go over the last thing, which is the arrival system. So, we will go ahead and bust into here and see how that works. So, the arrival system, you would come in the exact same way you came out. You will go ahead and land here, and then you would, uh, normally, the cart would go that way, so I just made it so you would bounce back. You travel up this little path all the way over here, um, obviously in your minecart, and you will land over here. Then, when you're in your minecart here, there's obviously no way, um, or I, I kind of didn't want you to be able to uh, go down. And so what I did is I made sure you landed on an unpowered, powered rail, meaning that the, uh, you know, this pressure plate here, it, there's like no redstone to do this. All you have to do is step on that pressure plate and activates it, makes the minecart go down. I guess if you really wanted to, you could, as soon as you got out, you could shift click and get in it like this, but uh, you probably, oh boy, that's loud. In survival mode, you would probably end up dying uh, because of that. But that is really one of the only flaws that I can't do much about. Uh, but other than that, I will go ahead and just explain a little bit more here, and that will be the end of the video. So something I will mention is to save space, I didn't actually make this piston door with redstone. What I did is I made it so that all these pistons here are powered by redstone blocks. When I step on this pressure plate, you can see they disappear, and then it uh, has a little timer down there, which then in turn will place the redstone block back. That's just something, uh, if you're building a piston door with uh, red, or not redstone blocks, with uh, command blocks, something you can keep in mind. Also, uh, just to save time and space, again, I didn't come up with the redstone to retract this middle block, I just simply made it air and then uh, filled it back in with glowstone. So, other than that, that is pretty much it. Again, this isn't my original design, however, there is a lot of stuff in it. I tried to keep as much of an alpha, beta type feel as I could. Uh, I just really liked that video, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and recreate that, and so I did. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you do want like a block-by-block -block tutorial on the basic system and how to build this minecart station, definitely leave a comment, and that is a possibility. I'm you know, totally fine with doing a block by block, but be warned, if you do want that, it will probably be like an hour long, because doing some of the coding in the command blocks and stuff does take a little bit of time, but it's not super advanced. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching to the end, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.